Hey folks, Ray from DCRainmaker.com here. I'm here today in the Specialized Wind Tunnel to test one of the claims that Wahoo's made with their newest bike computer, the Wahoo Element Bolt. Now what they said with this bike computer is that they are faster than the leading competitors out there. It's presumed that's the Edge 520 or the Edge 820. It's not quite clear, um, but they're saying they're 12.6 seconds faster or basically a 50% reduction in drag compared to that bike computer. We also don't know whether or not they're using the out front mount or the on top of the uh, stem mount there. So we tested both of those. Uh, what we're doing here though is we got the Bolt and a whole crap ton of other bike computers to test simply how aerodynamic they are. Um, now the specialized wind tunnel is set up in particular for bicycles and this kind of uh, testing here. And so what we're doing for each one of these units is that we're running through a test at exactly zero degrees level. Um, that's really super important to, from an aerodynamic standpoint. And then with the case of the bolts, we're also testing at six degrees up uh, because Wahoo's claimed that that is also uh, perfectly fine from a aerodynamic standpoint as well. Um, so we're gonna run through all these tests, Garmin's, we got some Polar units, uh, the new stages dash in there, uh, just to test them all. And then we'll come back and look at the data and see whether or not the claim holds up. Oh, and one quick thing, uh, Specialized is not paying uh, for anything here. I'm not paying Specialized for anything here. I'm just simply here along the way on my drive from the airport to uh, see out of the big bike show. Uh, it's just, it's like two minutes off the highway and we thought it'd be kind of fun to see if this kind of stuff uh, to geek out on. Also, keep in mind, I did a bunch of tests about a year ago uh, here in the wind tunnel as well on bike computers and action cams and all that jazz. You can check out the link in the description down below. And then Specialized themselves has a whole crap ton of videos um, where they would geek out on all sorts of crazy aerodynamic wind tunnel stuff. You can hit that up in the link up there. Uh, their playlist full of videos. If you want to like burn your entire afternoon watching geeky aerodynamic stuff, that's the place to go. Um, and then of course, check out the post down below for this video that'll talk about the data from this video, include all the raw data as well. Uh, so you can check out that and make your own conclusions based on that. So let's talk about all the head units. On the left hand side you see the full list of all seven units we tested. The Edge 1000, the Polar V650, the Stages Dash, the Wahoo Bolt, the Edge 520, the Edge 820, and the Polar M460. Each of them with a default in-box out front mount as well as the rubber band mount for the Garmin Series 2. Um, for each of those tests we took on and off the mounts individually. We went ahead and ensured that they were all equal. So by doing that we set a level at zero degrees. Um, so we used just a simple iPhone level uh, and validated that against our real level as well and that worked out pretty much perfectly. Um, we also then put the Wahoo Bolt at six degrees as well uh, because that's one of the claims that they made within their materials. As for the wind tunnel itself, you may not realize, but in this case, actually, the wind tunnel pulls the wind towards the bike. It's actually pushing the wind. Uh, so the fans are at the back there, and they go ahead and they pull the wind uh, from the front of the tunnel to the back of the tunnel across the bike. That helps make it a bit more stable there. Um, now, on the bottom there, you see that rotating plate. What that does is it actually moves the bike to different yaw angles, so we can test uh, negative 10 degrees, negative five degrees, zero degrees, five degrees, and 10 degrees, uh, basically across a 20 degree sweep. And that's because the wind will not necessarily hit your bike directly head on uh, precisely every single time. It's gonna come at different angles, uh, so we wanted to account for that. All the data is shown in the wind tunnel in real time on these monitors, but we're actually more interested in recorded data so we can analyze it later on after the fact. Uh, for these sort of tests, it's easier to do that after the fact. Um, now we did that start off with the Wahoo Bolt, but then we went through many units, one after another, after another, after another and all the way back to the bolt as well again uh, this time just to validate our tests were correct originally uh, and we just took a couple hours to complete all this testing so here we are with the results of the wind tunnel test specialized basically put together an entire package that includes all the data as well as the pictures that show each of the different sets um, i've got those pictures in the review from a high-res camera but the way the tunnel works it will automatically actually do that together that way you can quickly and easily see within a given test what it looked like from the front and the side and all that kind of stuff. Um, now, going through this, there's some reference information there. You can go and pause if you want to double check any of that. I'll link to this within my post so you can go and download this entire report if you'd like to as well. Um, basically, it just talks about the test setup. It talks about some of the terms that we're going to see here uh, and then what you're seeing in terms of the actual bike that was used as well. Uh, and again, those photos that I mentioned from each of the different angles, uh, forward and side, um, are included. What we really want is a test results itself. Now, one of the things I mentioned at the very beginning was that we did not put a rider on the bike, and some people uh, get really hung up on that, and it makes a lot of sense to put a rider on the bike if you're doing something like a helmet test or another part of the bike where you're actually testing the bike itself, but within the bike computer mount um, and the bike computer, the tolerance is so, so small. I mean, it's incredible how small that tolerance is um, and how minute the differences are that in most cases, a rider would be beyond that tolerance, uh, meaning that people are gonna move too much between each test to really be able to make a definitive statement, yes or no, on these different units. It also helps to eliminate those variables of that rider as well. Um, and in most cases, you're in 
front of the envelope of the rider. Um, there's a study I'll link to down below that talks to the, exactly that uh, in terms of where that bubble is that people like to talk about. So check that out as well. Anyways, for the test results you see right there, uh, on this left-hand side, you've got the bike alone. So this right there, uh, that is the bike by itself, the CDA value, uh, basically the drag of the bike. And then you see the Wahoo Element Bolt, um, almost identical, just a, a little bit slower, um, as you'd expect as you're adding more drag to it. Uh, and that's just beyond it. And then you can see the Wahoo uh, Bolt at plus six degrees. Uh, so we bump up to 0 0.73 on the CDA um, compared to 0 0.72 before. You see those little dashes that are just right above it there. Um, above and below that there. That's a span of basically the precision of the tunnel. Uh, in other words, what your plus or minus your accuracy range is. Uh, so in, in a lot of this case, you're within the accuracy of the tunnel itself, um, but still there's differences between these. And we can see these and repeat the tests um, for almost all these things. For example, repeated the Wahoo bolt at the very beginning, as well as at the very end. Uh, we also went ahead and did uh, three test runs of the tunnel at the beginning and at the end, again, to validate that things are the same across the board uh, from the beginning of the test to the end of the test because a lot like a power meter, um, a tunnel actually warms up in terms of the way uh, it changes over time. So it's things that you want to validate to make sure that you are indeed consistent over the entire period of testing, which is again why we did so many dry runs at the beginning. Next, you can see the stages dash there. Um, and then beyond that, the Polar M460 on the Polar mount. Again, that's their new metal mount um, that's sort of been announced, not really been announced. I may have just announced it right now. Either way, that's that metal mount. Uh, and then you see the V650, the 520, the 820, 1000. And then finally, the rubber band with the 820. So with the 820, what we do is we put it on the standard little rubber band mount that comes in the box of the 820, just for fun to see how that might test. We put that on the stem itself, and there you can see the results there. Um, so it's actually a little bit faster than doing on the out front mount. And the reason for that is likely that it's sort of hidden behind the stem um, a little bit, and the stem you know, goes slightly downwards, and so it's out of the wind a bit more than it would be on the out front mount. Anyways, going on to the next one here, um, this is time savings over 40 kilometers versus the Edge 1000, which was the slowest thing we tested, you remember up here. What this is basically showing you is relative to the Edge 1000, how fast and slow things are. So obviously it's way faster to have nothing on there. Um, and if you put the Edge 1000 compared to the Stages Dash, they both kind of suck from an aerodynamic standpoint. But that's not actually what Wahoo tested. So what we did is after we did this whole test, we went back and tried to touch base with Wahoo to find out what they tested from their aero claim standpoint. Uh, in their case, they tested the default garment out front mount, exactly what we tested, um, against the Edge 520, um, which is also what we tested too. So those are the two computers they used. Now they actually ran two different tests. What they did was they put one test at zero degrees and one test at six degrees. Um, so they're thinking, and it's not necessarily incorrect, is that a lot of people tilt up their bike computers to make it more readable. Um, and so they wanted to show that the Wahoo Bolt at six degrees up um, was just as readable, but also more aerodynamic. Now, one of the things we did test a year ago, the last time I was in the wind tunnel with bike computers was whether or not if you rose your uh, out front mount up a little bit, if that impacted the aerodynamics. And it was a resounding yes. That was a bad, bad thing to do. Um, if your bike computer isn't flat, um, it's really, really bad. And so th that's kind of Wahoo's thinking here is that, you know, most people do actually, you know, rise theirs up a little bit to make it readable and therefore, anyways, you got the whole point. So what you see here is comparing to the Edge 520, whether or not things are faster. It's really that simple. Anything on the upper side is faster, anything on the lower side is slower. Um, so by having a bike alone versus an Edge 520, we would save three seconds, so that would be faster. Um, the next one is the Wahoo Element Bolt. Is that faster? Yes, that is actually faster by one second in a flat configuration than the Edge 520. Um, in a six degree up uh, test, it's actually slower than the Edge 520 flat. And because that gets in a little bit into what Wahoo is claiming, is they're claiming they took the bigger of those two numbers and they said, if you did it flat, then it would have a much smaller time savings um, but still a present one compared to the Edge 520 uh, in their CFV testing. And we can validate that on the tunnel. That actually looks true. Um, and then they're claiming that if you did plus six degrees compared to a um, Edge 520 at plus six degrees, that that would be substantially faster. Um, and that's something that we can validate from last year's testing that we saw that there was actually quite a bit of a difference um, between rising those two. And so that's certainly valid as well. Um, so, you know, kind of the takeaways here are essentially that First off, all these bike computers are really darn close. And that's something that it's really easy to look at something like this and go, whoa, it's a massive difference. Not really. I mean, you're talking like for most of these, like one or two seconds over 40K TT, which A, these bike computers aren't testing the TT configuration because Wahoo's mount isn't designed for a time trial bike. And so that's what's so funny about this is that 
we tested this on a road bike like Wahoo did, like their claims did, because that's what their claim was. But in reality, no one does a TT on a road bike. They do a time trial on a time trial bike. So it's sort of a nebulous, somewhat useless claim. Um, and in most cases, aerodynamics aren't making a huge bit of difference when it comes to road bikes. Certainly they're valuable, yes, and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to road races, it's not usually the aerodynamics that win it. Um, it's weight and it's the rider skill more than in a time trial where aerodynamics could absolutely win it, especially too for triathlons and things like that where you know that 40K TT becomes five times that much in an Ironman event and that becomes a really, really big deal. So to conclude it all, is Wahoo's claim valid? Actually, it is, to a degree. It, it's valid that it's definitely faster than anything out there. There's no doubt about that. Um, but it's not as fast as they claimed. I mean, we didn't, they're saying 12.6, 12.7 seconds. We're seeing a couple seconds in, in a best case scenario. Um, maybe it's, you know, maybe a little bit more than that if you were tested again versus the angle up thing, but eh, so, so. So yes, they were technically right that it is faster um, and definitely the fastest by computer out there. Just not as much as they would have said is kind of my, my thinking. So after the test, I went back to Wahoo and said, hey, I didn't give them the exact results, but I said, you know, we're not really seeing the same numbers that you're seeing in terms of the greatness of a difference there. Uh, and they came back and noted that, you know, their testing is based on one particular bike and one particular configuration and that things would change and that they said, you know, there are such minor difference between the bikes that even the smallest of bike changes could impact things across the board. Uh, and that's certainly true as well here. And it's, and I would agree with them in that scenario that, the bike that we tested is incredibly aerodynamic. I mean, that's a beautifully laid out setup right there. Um, internal routing, all that stuff from a cabling standpoint. So it's about as good as you're gonna get. Um, on some other bike configurations uh, and other rider setups and all that kind of stuff, you may end up with different results, which is always the case with aerodynamic testing. That's why, you know, like one helmet doesn't test as well in one person, another helmet on one bike compared to another bike. Um, that's, that's the reality of aerodynamic testing and that, yes, there are things that you can take away and compare, you know, test to test to test, uh, but sometimes it's better just to have it on a given bike and decide whether or not that makes sense for that given bike setup. Anyways, thanks for watching. Again, go and check out the full details down below in that link right there. I got tons more pictures on the whole setup, test setup, as well as more information the last time uh, I was in the tunnel with testing on action cameras and bike computers and all that kind of jazz. And then don't forget to check out the thingy up top with the playlist. Uh, basically, that's all of Specialized. There's really cool videos. Again, this was not sponsored by Specialized or by Wahoo or by anyone. It's just I paid my own ticket down there uh, and we just had fun in the wind tunnel for a couple hours. Have a good one.